Hello everyone, my name is Martin Richardson. I'm a farrier based locally in Tetbury. Although I always aim to keep as much variation in my shoeing round as possible, the majority of my work is looking after sports horses. This work typically ranges from stud and foal work up to five star eventers and Grand Prix dressage horses. I've always taken great pride in seeing a foal that I've trimmed from birth get its first set of shoes on and then go on to have a successful competition career. Day one, a foal is born. Within the first 12 to 24 hours of a foal being born, you should arrange for your vet to do, to do a foal check, which will not only include the general health check, but it'll also a chance to see the foal standing and walking. It is very important to evaluate the confirmation of a foal within the first few weeks of birth. While severely affected foals are likely to require more complex ongoing treatment, it is often possible to avoid radical intervention by tackling the problem early. At the stud where I am resident farrier, I will see a newborn foal at, week, at one week old. If there are no concerns raised by the vet during the vet check, I will simply watch the foal walk out to the field next to the mare. I find this is a good way for me to gauge how they are developing between birth and when I first trim them at five weeks. From personal experience, I have found that a foals are generally too weak at this early stage to make an accurate assessment of their gait or confirmation. But if between the vet and myself I have noticed anything outside of what we would consider normal, that particular foal will be put on the list and checked every week to see if the foal will improve naturally. The regularity of this is made easier by the fact that I am there every week and in most cases it is only necessary to recheck a foal every other week. Although confirmation and hoof shape should be constantly monitored throughout development, the first farrier contact is an opportunity for group assessment by farrier, manager or owner and often a veterinary surgeon. At this inspection, any deformities can be identified and documented and a treatment plan agreed on. The cause, severity and prognosis of the deformity are a vital piece of information that should be acquired before formulating a treatment plan. If, after three weeks of observation, I still have concerns about a foal, or sometimes sooner, the stud manager will arrange for the farrier, vet, owner or manager to meet and consider what, if any, action should be taken. This highlights the importance of having the right team around you that will communicate together with the foal's best interest in mind. Understanding what is considered normal confirmation in a foal is key because they are very different to that of a mature horse. It is rare to see a foal with straight limbs where the long axis of the limb is 180 degrees when viewed from the front or behind. Foals are often described as being A-framed in the first few months. This deviation normally corrects as the foal's limbs elongate and the chest widens. It is not uncommon for a foal to be carpal valgus and will almost always appear toe out. Angular limb deformities is defined as a deviation of the limb from the straight line that bisects the long bones of the limb when viewed from the frontal plane. As you can see on the picture, a lateral or medial deviation of the long axis of the limb from the midline. The black line parallel to the radius, the yellow line parallel to the third metacarpus. Deviations towards the lateral aspect are called valgus. Deviations towards the median aspect are called varus. Flexural limb deformities, abnormal joint flexion, often referred to as contracted tendon, can occur in the knees, fetlocks and tendons. Overextension abnormalities, often referred to as dropped fetlocks. The age of the foal must be kept in mind when treating angular limb deformities. Growth plates close at different stages of the foal's development. Once a growth plate closes, the bone growth stops and any correction becomes much harder to achieve. Fetlock, two months. The hock or tarsus is four months. And the knee or carpus is six months. How to assess a foal. As when assessing a horse, foals should be viewed standing as symmetrically as possible on a firm, hard surface. It should be viewed from the front, rear and both sides. The foal should then be walked towards and away from the examiner. This is made easier by walking the mare in front or alongside the foal. It is often important to palpate each limb. 
During this time, the medial lateral foot balance should be checked. When assessing a foal from a sagittal plane or side view, we are looking for flexural abnormalities, which cause issues such as over at the knee or back at the knee. Mild cases of angular limb deformity can normally be diagnosed by clinical assessment alone. However, more complex angular limb deformities, which may involve more than one joint, will require a more accurate assessment. These cases call for x-rays, which will determine the severity of the angular limb deformity and give us a fuller picture of which structures are involved. Trimming a normal foal. If a foal is considered normal, I would trim it every four to five weeks. Regular trimming is essential because a neglected foot will quickly distort, which in turn creates a greater uneven loading on the limb. Conservative management is often all that is required. This includes restricted pen or box rest, corrective trimming of the foot, and in some more severe cases, a hoof wall extension. Trimming a foal with mild angular limb deformity is the same as dealing with a normal horse. The aim should be to produce a correct foot with minimal imbalance. When viewed from the front, the coronary band should be parallel with the ground and the bottom of the foot. Although tilted coronary bands can be a sign of medial lateral imbalance, trimming aimed purely at levelling this line often leads to additional problems. Angular limb deformity often creates a hoof capture distortion and correct foot trimming alone may correct this and reduce uneven stress through the limb. For example, a mild fetlock varus pushes the hoof capsule medially and wears the lateral hoof wall. This will create a more toe-in conformation. Future soundness relies on good sole depth and strong hoof capsule and appropriate heel height. In the majority of cases, I rarely trim any sole or frog until the foal is six months old. The bars should always be trimmed if they are prominent and should never be weight-bearing. Where appropriate, the heels should be lowered slightly to increase the surface area of the foal's foot. Over the first three to four trims, the toe of the foot should be rounded or squared off to help with breakover. It is important to note that over-trimming of a foal in an attempt to correct an angular limb deformity almost always has a negative effect on hoof development. My personal approach to trimming to correct an angular limb deformity is little and often. I will look at a foal every week and try to rebalance the foot removing a small amount at a time. By doing this, I never have to weaken the hoof capsule by over-trimming it and risking hoof capsule distortion. If after three to four weeks of corrective trimming, the angular limb deformity has not corrected, I will then in most cases apply a foal extension. Foal extensions are used when it is not possible to balance a foot or limb by simple corrective trimming. The, the idea of an extension is to create a more even weight-bearing surface for the foal. The preferred method is to extend the solar surface of the bottom of the foot back towards the centre line. The extension changes the weight-bearing surface of the foot and therefore the axial load of the limb in the direction of the extension. This is important to remember when fitting such extensions that they should be removed after a maximum of three weeks. The hoof capsule is porous and very malleable at this stage. Extensions of any size and type can create leverage on the hoof wall. By removing the extension regularly, this allows your vet and farrier to check the progress of the angular limb deformities. Mild angular limb deformities will correct quickly and can sometimes overcorrect. Management of hyperextension or dropped fetlocks. Most of these will resolve with restricted exercise in about 10 days. Corrective trimming will help, and in some more severe cases, particularly where the fetlock is contacting the ground and creating sores at the heels, extensions may be required. In cases where corrective trimming and extensions have failed to correct an angular limb deformity, the surgical event intervention becomes necessary. This will be decided by the vet and the farrier. Foals will still require regular trimming and possibly hoof wall extensions. Periosteal elevation encourages growth, lateral for valgus and medial for varus. Transfecial bridging retards growth, medial for valgus and lateral for varus. So a take home message, a little deformity is normal and in most cases will correct with the right management. 
A team approach is absolutely essential. Vet, farrier, stud manager and owner. Little and often is usually best approach. And bear in mind the timelines for those that are not improving as expected.